The smoke from Canadian wildfires that blanketed parts of the U.S. last week forced a lot of us to stay inside for a few days. Not me. I was covering it. Ball games, stage performances, all canceled. Construction jobs took a break, and school children were not allowed to play outdoors. While the medical concerns were significant, those disruptions were also an example of the economic toll of climate change, which experts say, of course, is making wildfires more intense and more frequent. Joining us here in studio is CBS Money Watch Associate Managing Editor, Irina Ivanova. Irina, thank you very much for being here. I can tell you that kids being home is a psychological burden on parents. That's a cost <laughs> that is high. At that age, yes. Those parents are also not going out with the kids. I actually had plans that afternoon. I had cousins in town. We were going to have a little uh, outing. We were going to go out and eat. So those you saved on all that. So those businesses lose that revenue, right? And That's you end up right. cooking from the pantry. Uh, and I mean, talk, talk about the... Take that example, but blow it up. What's the lost revenue picture like? That's right. We, we saw, you know, a hint of what happens all over the eastern seaboard uh, last week. Um, I recently saw a study from Stanford, actually, that specifically looked at the effect on people's wages, which is uh, an interesting um, thing that I, I hadn't uh, reported on before. Um, and it turns out wildfire smoke specifically, we're ignoring other types of air pollution for now, uh, wildfire smoke causes workers to lose out on about $125 billion per year in mm. wages. So that's wow. about 2% uh, of the money workers would otherwise make. 2% doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think back to the decade before the pandemic, you know, your average annual increase was about 2%. That's how much yeah, people's yeah. money wow. rose by. So that is, that is quite significant. Mm. And you look forward to climate change and worsening wildfires and catastrophes that will only go up. I'm wondering about, I mean, is any of this medical costs? as well? So there was a separate study um, from the Natural Resources Defense Council that looked specifically at the medical costs, and I was surprised at this number. They uh, said it averages out to about 2,500 per person per year wow. in medical costs. So that could be the immediate costs, you know, going to the ER uh, if you have an asthma attack or a heart attack. Um, and there's also long-term costs. You know, we, we have seen research that this fine particulate matter um, tends to make everything worse. You know, you, you have uh, more chances of bronchitis, pneumonia, worsening of asthma, um, higher chances of adverse birth outcomes, increased risk of heart attack, stroke, and, and some types of cancer. So it's really quite severe. I spent a little bit of time trying to pretend it was just like a big campfire and, you know, trying to have it. Because it smells like one, so you're not used uh, to mood, it. And I was told I was <laughs> stupid for that, and I guess I was. Uh, and if this is going to happen more regularly, uh, because according to the folks who study this kind of thing, climate change is drying things out, heating things up, uh, how can we prepare for the next time? So the experts I've spoken with really talk about a two-prong approach. Uh, and one of them, they say, is to really electrify everything, to try to bring down carbon emissions as much as possible, oh, yeah. to prevent this from getting worse and worse and worse, as it otherwise would. Um, but the other prong is really preparation and awareness. So this was new for a lot of us on the East Coast, you know, but people in California have been dealing with this for, for many years, you know, just getting the word out, making people aware, um, and then taking care of yourself, so uh, not going outdoors if you can avoid it, uh, not engaging in strenuous activity. If you have to go outdoors wearing a respirator, uh, if you're working indoors, even using like a high quality air filtration system mm -hmm. that can help get those particles out of the air. Um, and of course, these are, you know, individual things. I think we need to have a conversation um, nationally about what employers and companies can do. Right okay. now, we don't really have rules uh, as far as how to protect workers who have to be outside during an event like this. Right. Not to mention, you know, reducing emissions and carbon extraction and fighting deforestation and stop eating animals. But that is something different. That's <laughs> your personal policy. Irina Ivanova, thank you so much.